Good evening. Welcome to our midweek Bible class. Uh, if you would, please bow your head as we open up with a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we're so grateful for this day which you provided for us, and Father, for all the blessings that you give us each and every day. We're thankful, Father, for the avenue of coming to you uh, via Facebook and YouTube tonight for this midweek Bible class, and we're thankful, Father, for all those who uh, are here and those who will listen later. We pray, Father, that uh, each of us might always uh, turn to you, Father, in good times and in bad. We're thankful for the blessings that you give us. We're thankful, Father, for uh, especially for the gift of your Son and Savior, Jesus Christ. We're thankful for his sacrifice, grateful for uh, the salvation we find through that sacrifice. Help us now, Father, uh, to put away the cares of the world, and we might center our minds for a few moments uh, on your word. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Again, we're grateful that you're with us. One of my favorite books is the book of Proverbs. So if you have your Bibles with you, uh, go with me to the book of Proverbs chapter 2. We're going to be in there, Proverbs chapter 2. If I ask you a question, do things just happen by accident? Or are there things that are guaranteed in life? Now many of you know that I love to collect Coca-Cola memorabilia. I have quite a few pieces and always will collect more. My office here at the church building has several pieces and uh, several pieces at home. But it's interesting as you look and research Coca-Cola, Coca-Cola kind of came about by accident. Back in about 1886, there was a pharmacist by the name of John Pemberton. And he had cooked up a, what he thought was a medicine or medicinal syrup that he thought he could give to people when they were ill. Maybe those that had pains and those who might have nervous issues and even teeth or tooth problems, uh, it would deaden those nerves. So he cooked up this concoction one night in a big copper pot uh, over a fire uh, using a oar of a boat to stir it. And after it came out, uh, one of his assistants tasted it, actually put ice in it, and so it would cool it down. And they said, you know, this tastes pretty good. Well, they wanted to try a second batch. And when they did the second batch, they accidentally put in some carbonated water. And it started fizzing. And, well, there you go. We have today Coca-Cola. I mean, it, it is about a $35.1 billion a year company. And they said if you drank a different beverage that Coca-Cola makes, uh, it would take you nine years to consume it all. Uh, that came by accident. But tonight I want to look in the book of Proverbs, primarily in chapter 2, where Solomon in his wisdom really gives us, I believe, a guarantee uh, for success in life. Now, wouldn't you like a guarantee? If I told you there was a 100% chance that something would happen, well, those are really, really good odds. Well, Solomon is going to give us a 10-point thing, and we're going to go through them very briefly, but 10 points as far as how to be successful in life. If you have a pen and paper at home, uh, I invite you to write these down with the, with the verses. But before we go to chapter 2, just for a moment or two, I want to look at a th the theme of the book of Proverbs. If you go to the first chapter there, about verse 7, also in the fourth chapter, uh, verse 7, it kind of gives us, Solomon does the theme for the book of Proverbs. It says there, for the fear of Jehovah is the beginning of knowledge, but the foolish, it says, despise wisdom and instruction. Uh, that's in chapter 1 and verse 7. Uh, Chapter 4 and verse 7 says, wisdom is the principal thing there. It says, therefore, get wisdom, Solomon says, with all you're getting, get understanding. He's basically saying this should be the highest, the foremost, the most important thing that we do uh, is to gain wisdom. And he goes on later to tell us, well, how do we get wisdom? Uh, what is wisdom worth? And when you go to uh, chapter 8, uh, 18 and 19, I'm going to give you another couple here. Chapter 16 and verse 16 and also chapter 20 and verse 15. Solomon pictures wisdom in all of these verses as the greatest treasure that a man can own. 
You think about things that are very valuable that you might own or somebody else owns. Solomon is telling us here in these verses, wisdom is something that's far more valuable. It's something that we need to go after. And you often think about, you know, how do I instill as a parent or as a grandparent, how can I instill the desire to have these eternal characteristics that we're going to speak about here tonight? That idea of how can I impart these onto my young people, uh, my, my children, my grandchildren? Uh, how can I do that? How can I give them that conviction? Well, it, Solomon is basically saying here, instill in them the value the value of wisdom. And if you do that to your children and your grandchildren, Solomon says they will understand and then they too will desire and they will want and they will hunt for this uh, wisdom. In the New Testament, in Matthew chapter 13, 44 through 45, Jesus here speaks of the kingdom of heaven. It says it's a treasure, uh, as a treasure hidden in the field, which a man finds and hides. And then in his joy, he goes and he sells all that he has and he purchases the field. This is the picture that Solomon is painting back in Proverbs, the value of wisdom. In the book of Proverbs, again, chapter 8 and verse 12, uh, Solomon defines wisdom. He calls it prudence, uh, knowledge, and he also says it's discretion. That idea of prudence being, uh, being, uh, expresses conviction, it expresses a uh, wisdom in the conduct that we have. Uh, it's judging in advance, and I like this, judging in advance what the probable results of one's action would be. For instance, if you touch the stove you're going, and it's hot, you're going to burn your hand. Um, if you jump off this cliff, you will die. We, we understand things like that. And that's kind of the prudence part of wisdom, but there's more to it. Solomon also says there's, there's discretion involved. That idea of being discreet, prudent in the decisions that we make, even modest. And then also the third part of it is knowledge. Well, how do you gain knowledge? That, I, that understanding of God's Word, that's only through experience and through study. Uh, especially of God's Word. Well, let's go to Proverbs 2 uh, for our study tonight. Proverbs 2, you'll notice, opens up with an interesting way of, uh, and for these first, at least first five or six verses. It talks about what I guess I would say an if and a then uh, uh, opens with an if and a then. It says, basically, if you do something, Solomon says, then this will be the result. So you want to remember that. It kind of sets up that you see, we all have to make a major decision in our lives with what we're going to do and uh, how we're going to use this wisdom. So basically, he's saying, go the way of wisdom. You desire it because of what it's worth. Remember, we talked about that. If you do that, you're going to find happiness and you're going to find life. If you reject the wisdom, then you're going to suffer sorrow and death. That's basically the success or the failure that's talked about in Proverbs chapter 2. Well, in Proverbs chapter 2, the first 19 verses, there's really a couple things that we're warned against. He warns us against the temptation of becoming violent uh, or using crime uh, to make easy money. We understand that. And also, another part of it, about verses 16 through 19, says there's somewhat the easy pleasures you want to avoid uh, by uh, being with the prostitute. It's almost as if it likened it to a spider web where the spider... Uh, web ha makes the web and lures its prey in, and Solomon says you don't want to be that way. Well, let's read with me the first five verses of the second chapter of Proverbs. It says there, my son, if you receive my words and treasures my commands within you, so that you incline your ear to wisdom and apply your heart to understanding. Yes, if you cry out for discernment, and lift up your voice for understanding. If you seek her as silver and search for her as hidden treasures, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and you will find knowledge of, of God. Well, we're going to go back to these five verses. Let's look really quickly. This is going to be your 10 part or 10 steps, easy steps that Solomon gives us 
to have success in life. Number one, look at verse one. It says here that we must receive God's word. I mean, that, that makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? In order to understand the value of the wisdom in God's word, we have to be able to receive it. To receive the divine revelation in the word, we have to respect it enough to be able to read it and spend time in it. During this time that we are apart and we find ourselves in our homes a lot more, what better time do we have than spending some of that time at least receiving God's word? Well, number two, also it says there also in verse one that we must hide or the scriptures say we store up his command. Reminded of the psalmist in Psalms 119 and verse 11. Remember your word I've hidden in my heart so I might not sin against you. We've got to be able to hide or store his commands. How do we do that if we are not in the word and studying the word? So Solomon gives us a very interesting picture here. First, we have to receive and then we have to store up. His commands. And there's even more to it. Look at verse 2 as we look at number 3 here. Number 3, it says, We must turn or incline our ear to wisdom. Once we see it, we hear it, we've got to be able to apply it, right? It says they're inclined, that idea of lean towards it. Don't challenge it. And you know, so many people, we read something in the scriptures and then we want to argue about it. Or we just want to say, you know what, I know the Bible tells me this or that. But you know what, maybe it means this or that. And we try to argue or we try to uh, say something that's not even in there. What Solomon is saying here, incline your ear, listen to what the word is saying. And then you follow it. Uh, number four, also in verse Two there. We have to apply our heart to understanding. That idea that we have to apply ourselves. We have to take those words that we've learned, those words that we've put into our hearts, uh, the wisdom that we're seeking because of its value, and then we have to apply it. You see, the first three here matter nothing if we don't apply them. You know, it's like a, uh, possibly somebody who's a, a drunk, and they might tell you, I want to quit drinking. But until they, they might want to do that, but until they apply themselves and get the information and, and decide to stop, they're not going to stop. Until we apply what we've learned, the first three matter nothing. So we apply it. Number five, look at verse three. It says there, we cry out for knowledge. And that's more than merely memorizing God's words. It's great to have ourselves or even our kids memorize, but there's more than memorizing it. It's actually getting into the word, studying it, and going deep into the word. Um, that, that, that idea that you cry out for it. When was the last time you cried out and you desired it in such a way that you just cried out uh, and you wanted to learn more and more? Well, look at verse 3 again for number 6. Number six is we lift up our voice for understanding. What does that mean? Simply, I think it means we pray. We realize the power that's in prayer and we can go to God and we can pray. Pray to give us that desire to long, to long for his word, to have that desire to understand its value and wanting to apply it to our lives. And we, we want to pray for wisdom. Nothing wrong with praying for wisdom. Well, number seven, we go to verse four. The seventh one is seek the word uh, as silver. Do you believe that God's word is valuable? That idea that if you knew there was something valuable. I, I remember years ago uh, when I lived in Jonesboro, uh, Arkansas, they hid a treasure uh, somewhere in Jonesboro. And in, in this box was uh, thousands of dollars, if I remember right, ver uh, worth of free things from all the uh, different businesses and gift cards and all kinds of things. And they gave you these hints on the radio. And every week, everybody would go out where they thought it was, and people would dig, and people would do all kinds of things trying to find that. If you thought there was something valuable here in our churchyard here, we'd have people here digging and trying to find it. Why? Because they desired that because of its value. Do we feel that way? Do we seek God's word because we realize its value? That's what Solomon is telling us here. Well, let's go quickly to number eight, also in verse four. Um, 
again, seeking her as hidden treasure. We've just talked about that, right? If you seek it and search for it, seek as silver, search for it like a hidden treasure. Again, a treasure we're going to hunt and we're going to try to find and we're going to be overjoyed when we find it. Are we eager to search the scriptures? Are we eager to spend our time with God's word? Again, number nine, go to verse five. We also need to understand the fear of the Lord. That idea of not just shaking in our boots necessarily, but we have a respectful fear of God. That we will obey his commands, that we will do exactly what he tells us to do. Um, and that the result of doing all of those things and getting into his word will be we will automatically receive that healthy fear of God. We'll look at verse 5 again for number 10. Find the knowledge of God. The knowledge of God, wisdom, is not going to just drop in our laps. It doesn't just come out of the sky and land on us and, wow, I found it. But the, uh, the wise man here says, you have to find it. It's going to take some work on our part. It can be easily discovered if we are looking for it. And that's the good news. So let's go over these really quick. Number one, what is Solomon's recipe for success? Number one, seek God's word. Number two, hide that uh, in your lives. Hide his commands in your heart. Number three, turn your ear to wisdom. Number four, apply your hearts to understanding. Number five, we cry out for knowledge. Number six, that we lift up our voice to understanding we pray. Uh, number seven, that we seek the word as silver. Number eight, that we search for that as a hidden treasure. Number nine, that we understand the fear of the Lord. And number 10, that we find the knowledge of God. It may not be that simple, but you look at all 10 of these as we work towards those and we desire those. There we find real success. You see, the real success in life is not a huge bank account necessarily. It's not the biggest business or the biggest house in town. All of the things that God blesses us with, those are great. But that's not the success that the Bible talks about. So the Bible is telling us here, the, the wise man says, number one, real success is listening to what God commands us. Number two, that we put those words deep into our hearts that we respect that. And number three, that we observe all of what God tells us to do. You see, real success, I believe, is a lot like what we hear in the New Testament from the Apostle Paul. In 2 Timothy chapter 4, 7 through 8, remember he says, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Now, because of that, then what happens, he says, then henceforth, is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, that righteous judge, will give me on that day. And he goes on to say, not only for me, but for everyone who longs for his appearing. Is that you? Is that me? That ought to be. Let's take these simple 10 uh, successes, these steps to success that Solomon gives us in Proverbs chapter 2 and the rest of the coming week. Let's apply those to our lives. Let's teach them to our children and our grandchildren where we can. And we can promise it's a guarantee that Solomon gives us that we will have success in life. And that is a crown of life someday. Thank you for being with us. Will you please bow with me as we close? Our Heavenly Father, again, we're so thankful for this time of study. Father, we're thankful for all the, the, the words that we uh, read and talked about uh, tonight in Proverbs chapter 2. Help us, Father, to desire your word, to realize the value, to hunt, to lift up our voices to you and desire for it, and that we might obey it, that we might all live the successful life that we can also say, as Paul did, I've fought the good fight, and I've finished the race. And Father, we're thankful for that crown of life that you have guaranteed us if we're faithful to you. May this help us and encourage us through the rest of the week as we look to you, Father. We ask, Father, that you would forgive us of those wrongdoings that we committed. We pray, Father, that you might always keep us encouraged. We pray for those that are sick, 
those that are awaiting treatments from our congregation here. We lift each and every one of them up to you, Father, and we just pray your richest blessings on them. Again, Father, we're thankful for this time that we've had, and since in Jesus' name.